The following is a presentation of the Healthcare Facilities Network. So we talked a little bit about the low-hanging fruit. You talked about LED lighting. What are some other simple, like if you're an organization, and I know that there's a lot of like smaller critical access hospitals, community-based hospitals, they might not be part of a system. They're kind of on their own. They're dealing with all those same challenges that everybody else is. If they're sitting there saying, oh my God, I got the 2030 date coming up and my organization is signed on, how do I get started? What do I do? How would you answer that? How to get started, but I also want to touch on something that you mentioned uh, with like the 2030 and the my organization has signed on type of stress that a lot of people feel right now. Um, Low-hanging fruit. Okay, so as I mentioned, lighting retrofits is a good one. That's one where you're going to get your ROI back pretty quickly. Um, that's LEDs. Uh, you know, most places I think at this point have installed lighting sensors. Um, so you're not lighting large parts of your hospital that are empty at that time or rooms that are empty, patient care is that are empty. Uh, there's a lot of things that we can do to the building envelope uh, that I would consider some low hanging fruit. Um, but one of the most important things is you need to know what your emissions are. Mm. Um, you know, you need to you need to get yourself in order because you can't manage what you don't measure. Um, so an effort to characterize like what is the energy use intensity of your hospital um, so that you know where you're starting from is really important. So I would say, you know, you can use your utility bills to get at your scope two emissions and some of your scope one. Um, you know, what is your vehicle fleet producing? So I'd say getting everything uh, measured up, at least for scope one and two emissions uh, right off the bat. And then another, oh, and another thing I would say is um, approach your commercial utility, because as rate payers, we are all paying into programs to enhance energy efficiency and reduce the load on the energy system. And if we're paying into those programs, we should be able to access those funds, yeah. right? And I think hospitals in particular, because the EUI, the energy use intensity, which is the energy usage standardized by the square footage, because that's so high in hospitals, your commercial utility wants to work with you to reduce your energy load. And so approaching your commercial utility and saying, hey, you know, what projects do you think we could implement to reduce our load and how can we finance them together with our utility? And that's another thing that can help with that ROI issue that we have in healthcare, that we are working on such a thin margin that we don't have the resources for these sustainability projects work with your utility um, and approach them early on in your sustainability journey. A big one. I, you know, I was just thinking as you were talking, I wonder if sometimes this problem or this, this sustainability can seem so vast that people kind of turn off. 100%. Like just so, avoidance as opposed to, just, I, I just can't even. Yeah, there's actually a lot of evidence of this. Um, one of my favorite climate scientists and communicators is a woman named Dr. Katherine Hayhow, and she actually writes about how a lot of what we need to do in terms of environmental stewardship, sustainability, uh, you know, standing up against the climate crisis is in like direct opposition with human psychology. Yeah, I was just, you know, when I was listening to you say that, that's kind of what I was thinking about. Yeah, like, it's that like head in the ground. This is such a big problem. What could I possibly do to help it? This kind of nihilistic, yeah. you know, it's almost like, well, if the party's going to end, I might as well enjoy the party as long as I can <laughs> uh, type of mentality, right? Yeah. But what if you can keep the party going and actually make it more fun? Good way to look that, at it. That's how we need to look at it, that the things that we can do from a sustainability perspective bring so many co-benefits, right? They can, it can improve air quality. It can save us money. It can protect us from extreme heat. Like there's so many great things that we can do. There's so much opportunity. And yeah. if there's like one thing I would want people to take away from this conversation, particularly healthcare leaders, it's that 
sustainability is an incredible opportunity for your organization. It's an opportunity to enhance efficiency. It's an opportunity for cost savings operationally. It's an opportunity to make the community that you serve healthier and safer. You know, we have to look at it as an opportunity um, because if we don't, then we're all just like head in the sand. How can we do anything? Yeah. And that's just like not a way to continue on. Right, right.